Welcome to the May 20th uh, meeting of the West Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency. Um, would the clerk please take the roll? Director Ladasma? Here. Karimo? Here. And Vice Chair Alcala is absent. Thank you. Okay. Yes, good morning. Pursuant to the Governor's Executive Order N29-20, members of the West Sacramento Area Flood Control Agency and staff will participate in this meeting video via a teleconference to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Members of the public have been asked to watch the meeting live stream and to submit comments in writing by 8 a.m. this morning. So as we begin, uh, First item on the agenda is uh, item 1A, presentation by public on matters not on the agenda within the jurisdiction of the agency. Um, looking at the screen here, I understand we've received no public comment as of this time. So we'll move on to uh, item 1B, which is a report out on closed session. Mr. Nevis. Good morning, Chair Ramos. Board met in closed session this morning on the two items listed on the closed session agenda. On item one, the board took no reportable action. On, on item two, regarding the government claim of April 26, 2021 by DeSilva Gates Construction, the board by a unanimous vote of those present uh, authorized the rejection of the claim and the defense of the claim by council. And that was the sum total of the closed session report. Thank you. Um, item 1C, monthly and year-to-date revenue and expense reports. Okay, I will be reporting out on the revenue and expenditures for the month of March, 2021. In our own fund 870, the balance was approximately 3.3 uh, 3 million. There's no revenue and expenditures were 14.3 thousand. The ending position for fund 870 was 2.99 million. In our CIP fund 871, the beginning balance was approximately negative 2.06 million. There's also no revenue and expenditures totaled 210,000, making the ending position for fund 871 to be at negative 2.27 million. At the end of the month, the combined cash position was 2.77 million. As of May 12, 2021, the agency's combined cash position was approximately 8.93 million. The agency did receive a partial retention release in the amount of 6.898 million. That's why our um, position's higher in May. And our quarter 38 was approved by state, and we're waiting for the letter to trip the cost for October to December 2020, and quarter 39 is still in process. The Army Corps also closed out the GRR and reimbursed the agency in state an amount of approximately 52,000. Staff is currently coordinating with state to distribute their portion of the reimbursement. Um, having nothing else to report, please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions? From any board members? Not this time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jen. You're good. Um, consent agenda. We have one item, and that's the approval of the uh, April 15th, 2021 meeting minutes. Uh, having reviewed them, I would make a motion to receive the minutes as presented. I will second. And uh, first and seconded. Um, would uh, uh, by motion by myself, seconded by uh, Board Member Ledesma, would uh, the clerk take the roll? Okay, so I just want to note that Norma just joined, so I'll be calling roll call for vote. And okay. um, Director Ledesma? Aye. Vice Chair Alcala? Aye. Chair Ramos? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you. And and good morning, Norma. Thank you. Coming on. Um, good morning. You're 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 just in time. 
for item number three, which is the uh, consideration of resolution adopting the West Sacramento Area Flood Control by annual administrative and operate, operating budget and capital improvement budget for fiscal years 21-22 and 22-23. I'll turn it over to Roberta and Becky. Good morning. Okay, so let me quickly pull up my screen. All right, you guys able to see my screen? Okay, yes. perfect. All right, so good morning. Um, this morning I am here to present the budget workshop and adoption for fiscal years 21-22 and 22-23. There we go. All right, so a brief overview of today's agenda. So we're gonna talk briefly about the Wasefka um, fund structure and then look at the projections for this current fiscal year 2020-21, and then the proposed budgets for 21-22 and 22-23 for the City Flood Support Services Fund 652, the Wasefka Administration and Operations Fund 870, the Wasefka Capital Projects Fund 871, and then, of course, at the very end, the recommended action would be to approve resolution 210501, which is adopting the agency's biennial budget for fiscal years 21-22 and 22-23. All right, so looking at the Wasefka fund structure, the fund structure includes an operating fund 870, which houses all of the assessment revenues and the general operating budget for the authority. So this fund covers debt debt service payments, distributions to the reclamation districts, contributions to the city for the flood support services, general operational costs, and local support for capital projects. Now the capital projects are housed in Fund 871. So these projects are funded by assessment revenues transferred from the operating Fund 870, as well as outside funding sources like state and federal reimbursements. Fund 257 is the account that holds the advanced funds received from the state EWR. These are transferred to the Wasefka Capital Projects Fund 871 to fund projects on a reimbursement basis based upon approval by, approval by the state agency. There are also two other funds, 883 and 884, which are the Wasefka Debt Service Funds for the 2015 and 2020 bonds. The funds to cover these debt service payments are transferred from the, the Safeco Operating Fund 870 to each of the respective debt service funds to make the debt service payments twice a year. All right. So then looking at the City Flood Support Services Fund 652. So as I mentioned on the last slide, the Wasefka Operating Fund makes a contribution to the city to cover the flood support services which are accounted for in this fund 652. This fund is reconciled at each fiscal year end to ensure that appropriate contributions are received from Wasefka to cover all of the expenditures and should always end with a $0 fund balance. So this fund covers personnel costs, operations and maintenance costs, which includes such things as office supplies and training and travel expenses, general support cost allocation charges, which includes costs such as payroll, HR, IT, finance, facility operations and maintenance, as well as vehicle maintenance. And then the fourth category is actually a new one for this that starting with this fiscal year and the upcoming proposed biennial budget. And this is a contribution back to the Wasefka Fund 870. So I wanna kind of highlight a few of the um, changes to this fund that in turn affect the Wasefka Operating Fund as this fund is funded by Wasefka. So first is the personnel category. So with the retirement of the Community Development Director back in December of 2019, the city made the decision to move the flood support services staff under the city manager's office where it was previously housed under the Community Development uh, Department. And with that movement came some change in the authorized uh, position list for this fund. Uh, it actually reduced the number of authorized positions funded by Wasefka. Uh, those changes included 
um, the reduction of a portion of the community development director, a portion of one of the ad analysts, and then we had a um, vacant supervising civil engineer position that was um, removed from this authorized position list as well. And, and overall, the kind of reason to do that was better to was to better align um, the authorized position list with the level of service that was really being provided to the to the pay staff. Um, second category for operations and maintenance. This has remained relatively unchanged from the last biennial to this current one. Um, you'll see that the projections for 2020, 2021 um, are, are very low. And this is because um, the operating budget is, is small um, and, and a good portion of it is for training and travel. And given um, the COVID pandemic, uh, while trainings may still be happening, um, the expenses related to travel were not. So, so many of them were being held virtually. Um, so this category is kind of low in, in under budget for this fiscal year. The third category is the general support cost allocation. So um, starting with fiscal year 2020, 2021, the city made a change to the methodology for how we're allocating the general support costs. Uh, previously, it was, it was heavily weighted um, on number of FTEs. And with the change to methodology, our goal was to more align the, uh, the allocation with the level of services provided to each cost center. So for example, um, one of the areas in the finance category is accounts payable. So instead, under the, where the old methodology might have been weighted by FTE, the new methodology is actually allocating those costs by the number of invoices processed by accounts payable by cost center. Um, for the clerk's office, they're being allocated by the number of agenda reports that they're processing by cost center. Uh, HR and payroll are being allocated partially by FTE, but also by um, the salary and benefits budget. And the goal overall is to better align um, those costs to where the level of service is being provided. And what we've seen with the city flood support services fund is that that support cost has dramatically decreased in this current fiscal year and in the upcoming two fiscal years. Um, so the general support cost allocation is, is estimated to be about 112,000 in the current fiscal year and then going up a little bit in each of the following two fiscal years. Um, but to note that in fiscal year 1920, before the methodology change, methodology change this uh, support cost was 282,000 for this fund. So it, did, it drastically decreased with that change. Um, Looking at the fourth category, the contribution to the Wasteful Operating Fund 870. So this is a brand new category. At the tail end of fiscal year 1920, we created two administrative work orders for Wasteful that are fully funded um, by the Wasteful Operating Fund. And the goal of creating these was to bring in reimbursement um, more on a monthly basis to the Flood Support Services City Fund 652 and to hopefully reduce and potentially eliminate the large screw-ups from the Wasefka Operating Fund that we had been seeing um, in previous fiscal years. Now, uh, this current fiscal year is kind of the first fiscal year that we've really been able to utilize these work orders. And what we're actually seeing is that um, we, this fund is bringing in a larger reimbursement um, than we have actual costs. So we're actually anticipating on um, providing a contribution back to a safe tech in this current fiscal year and in the upcoming two fiscal years. All oh, right. And so um, I also put in a slide just to kind of show uh, the current five positions that are included in the authorized position list that are funded by WSAFTA. You'll see that there is the elimination of a portion of the community de development director, a portion of one of the um, analysts and then the removal of the vacant supervising civil engineer position. And then moving in to the Wasteka Operations and Administration Fund 870. So this fund is really broken up into five different expenditure categories. So the first one is the O&M distributions of assessment revenues to the reclamation district. 
So you'll see that this contribution to the reclamation district is going up in each of the two future um, proposed fiscal years. And that is really because we are bringing in a higher level of flood assessment revenues. Um, and there, the allocation to the reclamation districts is a percentage of the total flood assessment. So as those go up, so does the distributions. The second category is the other operational costs. And this includes such things as legal, lobbying, audits, bank fees, et cetera. Um, this has remained relatively unchanged from the last biennial to this. Um, you will just see that for this current fiscal year, we are anticipating coming in well under budget. The third category is the city support costs, which are not billable to projects in Fund 871. Um, I kept this on here just to show. So this is where we would have historically seen that year end screw up. Um, to the city flood support services fund 652. However, with the use of those two work orders, um, we are seeing that that um, contribution is now brought down to zero. We're actually anticipating a reimbursement back to the operating with the operating fund. The fourth category are is the debt service payments on the outstanding uh, with they said 2015 and 2020 bonds. So for these, we transfer in advance of the debt service payment to ensure that we're reserving funds for the future debt service payment. And this is because the first installment of assessment revenue is actually not received until after we make our September 1st debt service payments. So we're always reserving one in advance. The fifth category is the operating reserve policy. So this reserve, um, this what this does is reserves one year's worth of operations and administration expenses as fund balance. And then once the first four categories are met on this slide, so that um, distributions to the reclamation districts, the uh, operation and maintenance, city support costs and debt service, once all of those categories are met, any excess fund balance above that reserve is then transferred to the city capital projects fund 871. And this is transferred in order to fund the local share of projects, as well as bridge the, uh, bridge the deficit in this fund while we await reimbursement from state and federal agencies. On this next slide is the Wasika Capital Projects Fund 871. So this slide shows all of the active projects that we have for the Wasika uh, Agent uh, Authority. You'll see that there's two new requests in each of the upcoming um, budget years, and those two requests are for those administrative work orders that we started at the tail end of fiscal year 1920. Um, in the first uh, upcoming fiscal year for 21-22. Um, the budgets are slightly higher. One, um, when we first started these work orders, we weren't quite sure um, how much was going to be charged to each of them. We had made an estimated uh, guess, uh, but now that we're seeing how they're used, uh, we need to true them up uh, as one of them has a negative balance. And then in addition, I looked at how they have been used and what the average monthly charges are to each of them to estimate what the proposed budgets should be for the upcoming two years. And then looking at just a, 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 this slide kind of summarizes a brief summary of, of some of the cha notable changes um, in this upcoming biennial and some, some happen each year. So the first one happens each year and that's the 2% increase to the flood assessment revenues um, for the Wasteska Operations and Administration Fund. The second is a 14% decrease in the budget of expenses for the City Flood Support Services Fund 652 for the upcoming two years. And once again, largely related to the movement of um, the flood support services staff underneath the, the city manager's office, and then and in turn, the change in the authorized position list because of that, as well as the change in methodology to the general support allocation to this fund. Uh, in addition, there's the elimination of the year-end screw-up contribution to the City Flood Support Services Fund 652 from the Wasika Operating Fund 870. And in turn, we're actually going to be seeing the reverse where the city is going to be making a contribution back to the agency as we are anticipating receiving um, reimbursement higher than the level of expenditures that we're um, anticipating. 
And then the fourth item is new, the new request for the billable work order 40202 for the general JPA support. And then 40203 for the work order related to the larger flood program, including the federal project. All right, so at this point in time, um, I would love to open up uh, to any questions, um, concerns, feedback you may have uh, for finalizing this budget. And then, of course, the recommended action uh, would be to hopefully approve uh, resolution 21-05-01, which is adopting um, the biennial budget for fiscal years 21-22 and 22-23. Thank you, Becky. Uh, well presented. Um, I guess I'll go to the board and let us um, see if they have any questions or, or comments. Well, I'll go ahead. Um, go ahead, Chris. Chair, uh, thank you. And um, Becky, thanks for the <laughs> really good presentation. I was in reading through the staff report, um, I was trying to understand a little bit what you kind of broke down and the graph broke down a lot easier about understanding breaking out the, 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 the kind of the, the new allocations um, and, and reserve funds you're building out, which I think are smart. And, and, and I don't know if I have a question, but um, um, but but it is it does make sense to make sure that 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 those areas are covered and and planned for and um I, I was i mean it was um am, am i thinking about this the right way in that um this was a, a more of a proactive was there was there anything that kind of um uh, drove us to kind of make that decision to kind of have these funds this this way or was there a finding of some sort no, there wasn't a finding. Um, we actually, I, I believe it was at the midterm or the last biennial, I think it might have been the last biennial, we had um, the board adopt a resolution appro uh, approving us to be able to start doing this uh, reserve policy. And the goal really was, um, you know, we had a surplus of funding, which is in the operating fund, which is really to fund, uh, you know, the local share of some of these capital projects. And and to start to make sure that it's already there and waiting um, for use of for the, the local share on those projects. And in addition, um, the, the capital projects fund is, is all historically been negative as we are always waiting reimbursement from state right. and federal agencies. And so uh, by transferring those funds, it would help also bridge the gap so that that fund was not negative each fiscal year. And then we chose to, to keep one year's worth. So, um, you know, we are part of the, the Teeter plans and we are receiving our revenue um, from the county. But if for some reason something were to happen, we always wanted to make sure that we have at least one year's worth reserve. Right. Um, no, I 100% agree. I'm just trying to, no. I, but I, no, I, there was I, no finding. Yeah, uh, I want to make, yeah. No, I think it's great and uh, well presented. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, Vice Chair Akala, do you have any questions Sorry, or comments? Yeah. Well, Sorry. I was just going to ask you, so how many new positions are, are being created? No new positions. Are no new positions. Created. Okay. No, All right. we, we actually um, reduced the number of authorized positions in, in the City Flood Support Services Fund um, to better align um, with the level of service being provided at the, the community development director position was vacated back in, in December of 2019. Okay. Um, and since we moved it under the city manager's office, it didn't really make sense to have that position um, under the authorized position list anymore. Okay, thank you, Becky. And, and another question I always ask, and I've asked this of, of you know, our, our, um, our city staff as well, how, how are we in terms of racial equity in terms of um, hiring? Um, so uh, that would be a question for HR as I don't do the hiring and, and um, I don't believe that we had hired, well, I guess we hired Brian a couple of years ago, but that's the most recent new um, addition to the staff mm -hmm. for the flood support services staff. I would, like to, I would like to get that breakdown. Sure. Thank you. Now, we can provide that for you, uh, Norma. There are only 
a very small handful of positions and most of them have been filled for many years. Um, mm -hmm. but, but we can certainly get the, um, what information we have from HR to you for that. All right, thank you, we appreciate it. Okay, um, Becky, I had a couple of, couple of questions. Um, I don't know if I fully understood that uh, towards the end, those um, two additional accounts in the 871 that were JPA administration uh, costs and stuff, I, I, uh, how does that work with uh, you know, the 652 account and, and the like? I, I did, it didn't quite all uh, make sense to me yet right away. <laughs> sure. So um, historically, the, the flood support services staff, when they're working on a capital project, they're charging their time directly to that capital project. But there right. are times in which they are, they are just uh, serving for the, the general JPA uh, or ser serving for the, the larger flood program. And so we created those two work orders to kind of capture what those costs are that are not directly related to a capital project. And the goal was is because when we treat these uh, work orders, they collect <clears throat> the indirect cost allocation. And the, the purpose of that indirect cost allocation is to try to recoup the, such costs as the general support, um, operations and maintenance. And so we did that to kind of on a monthly basis, try to collect for some of those overhead costs that we previously weren't able to account for until we did that huge year end screw up. Okay, and so then those, those I'm gonna costs say, or stuff are then- really Is to collect uh, uh, the funding throughout the year um, rather than having a big true up at the end of the year. So, you know, when we when we would report at the end of the year, you'd see, oh, well, there was a true up of, you know, $300,000 that had to be transferred from a safe. We were trying to make it more predictable throughout the year um, to account for and reimburse the flood support services fund for work performed uh, in support of, of the JPA throughout the year versus at the end of the year. Right. Okay. So th as, as those are charged, they're, 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 paid or transferred to 652, that's why at the end of the year, we have the reimbursement possibly coming back to uh, the safe code. That's absolutely okay. correct, yeah. So um, when, okay. we, when they charge there, it, it provides a reimbursement revenue to, to the city funds. I, I get it now. So the, the staff has, they have a place to charge their all their time rather than uh, just to see I, the big projects, okay. That's good, um, and uh, you know I've I've been around here the longest, and have been through you know several versions of these these budgets, and and uh, I got to say you know this is kind of what we've been looking for for a long time is a lot more clarity and um, transparency on the relationship between Wasafeca and the city and how funds flowed back and forth, and and. Uh, I think how this is structured now um, makes makes a lot of sense, and uh, you know it, it it really shows. And in in the end, I think uh, we'll uh, produce more assets for Wasafeca to uh, perform their mission, which is to complete the projects. So um, I applaud you on the work, and uh, I would make the motion to uh, approve the uh, biannual budgets for. 2021, 2022, 2022, 23, um, as, uh, as presented. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll second with the additional comment that uh, thanks to, again, Becky and Roberta, uh, they're on a bit of a roll because we had a good good conversation on budgeting last night on city council and, and uh, they do a terrific job. I agree with you 100% about the clarity and transparency this provides and more so the, the really good um, proactive nature of it in terms of providing, as you pointed out, um, Mr. Chair, um, the, the planning and predictability of the budget is much, uh, it, it, the smoothing out of those bumps is, is really important. So thank the staff for the, for the good work. So that's a second. Okay. Uh, it's been uh, motioned by myself and seconded by uh, board member Ledesma. Uh, would the clerk please take the roll? Director Ledesma? Aye. Vice Chair Alcala? 
Aye. Chair Ramos? Aye. All right, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everyone. And, and again, thank you, Becky and Roberta. Uh, job well done. Uh, on to uh, flood program update. Greg or Paul or who's who's on board today? <laughs> Paul's on deck. Um, Paul's not on deck. He's up today. I'll be on deck. Okay. Paul, you're on uh, mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm used to being on mute. <laughs> uh, Chairman Ramos and uh, members of the board, uh, here's some program updates of kind of what happened over the course of the last month. Some of you may be aware that there was a uh, small grass fire um, in Southport um, on the remnant levy. Um, it burned about a mile of shoreline, um, but did not affect the offset mitigation areas in any way, shape or form. Um, there was a small piece of um, irrigation equipment that was damaged, but that has since been repaired. Um, in terms of the uh, Yolo Bypass uh, East Levy project, uh, the design is at 100% complete. Uh, we're in the process of uh, working with our um, contractor to close out some comments from an earlier technical review. Um, we have received some comments back on our NEPA document for this project, and uh, staff is preparing for the public release of that, um, a public uh, hearing, and then uh, uh, coming back to the board, hopefully in uh, July, for uh, your consideration of that document. As some of you may already know, last night the West Sacramento City Council heard a first reading of an amendment to the flood, uh, floodplain management ordinance. Uh, this amendment is to try to bring us in conformity with some FEMA requirements and also is in uh, preparation for our community ratings uh, system site visit um, coming up this in the next couple of months, I believe. Um, on the federal front, um, Congresswoman Matsui provided testimony um, on the West Sacramento project and the uh, Yolo Bypass. Uh, to the House Appropriations Committee um, for Members Day. Uh, so that was, uh, that didn't get a whole lot of press, but something that you may want to, uh, you, you may want to know. Um, she did post it to her website. Um, also, staff did complete uh, another congressional direct funding request to Senator Padilla's office this week. Um, our request remains the same. We're still looking for a construction new starts and $35 million to launch. So that's been our consistent message to um, all of our representatives in DC. And uh, lastly, I'd like to just let you know that uh, staff is currently working on various scopes of work, um, surveying geotechnical and environmental hazardous investigations for the next segment of the West Slip, um, the Sacramento West North Levy. So that's something that uh, we're hoping to push out um, in the next couple of months. and perhaps get some, um, get some work underway in anticipation for that new start. And that's my report for this week. Okay, thank you. Greg, were you gonna add anything or? Uh, the only thing I would add is that the, uh, I, I don't know if everybody's aware, but the president's budget is due to be released um, a week from today the 27th. And along with that, um, usually is, you know, it's released in, you know, by, by agency. So the core will be releasing, you know, their portion of the president's budget. There's a small chance, and I want to emphasize small, but we we'll always try to remain hopeful. There's a small chance that there could be a new start or um, some, and or some construction funding in the president's budget. Um, so we'll see how, we're anxious to see how that looks when it comes out. And if not, then it's, it's as, we, as we've been planning with our congressional representatives for the appropriations bill process. Okay, uh, any questions or comments? From yeah, George? just, yeah, just, I, I, uh, Greg, thanks for the heads up. Um, so 
I'm sure if it's in there, we'll see an email from Greg with lots of exclamation points and all you'll, that good You'll stuff. probably hear me. <laughs> <laughs> then it's just a matter of keeping it there, which hopefully it will happen. It would happen. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Greg. Um, on to uh, 4B, director's comments. Anyone have anything else to say? Okay, uh, hearing none, um, I will call this meeting to as uh, adjourned and uh, till next time, uh, see you then. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Thank you everyone. Bye.